Hello and welcome to Campus 2 Community, the Columbia Basin College news magazine to keep you informed of what's happening at CBC and how we might better serve you. On our show today, we have Columbia Basin College Athletic Director Scott Rogers. He's going to be talking about the 9th Annual Follow Your Dreams Banquet coming up on January 29th and the all-important inductees into the Wall of Fame. But first, we're going to talk about our four-year bachelor degree in project management at CBC. And with us is Susan Renberger, who's a student in that program. But prior to talking to her, we're going to speak with uh, the gentleman to my right. And then is Rod Gadd, instructor in project management. Welcome, Rod. Thank you. What is project management? Well, a formal definition is it's the uh, application of knowledge, school, uh, skills, tools, uh, and techniques in order to effectively manage projects. A uh, simpler way of talking about it is taking the, the stuff that makes up good project management and trying to apply it to project teams. Okay, so what uh, makes uh, project management such a growing career? Well, I think there's increasing uh, recognition inside businesses that there's projects in almost every business. And the best way to improve the bottom line and to get things done more effectively is to apply better project management techniques. Hmm. So what are some of the requirements to get into this project management uh, program? Basically, uh, we have no prerequisites as in an associate's degree or a certificate. Uh, our program basically starts with uh, anyone that has a high school education, but we also can have people that already have education, AAS degree, AA degrees, or even bachelor degrees, can apply a lot of those, uh, tech, uh, those uh, credits to our program. So how many students do you have and where do they come from generally? Well, we have, uh, this last fall, we, uh, we had 70 new students join the program. We've got over, well over 100 people in the program, uh, and they come from a variety of walks of life. Some of them are, are uh, people that are retooling, uh, coming from one career, going to another career. Some of them are unemployed. Some of them are already in the field, but recognize they don't have quite the depth of knowledge in project management, and they're trying to just sharpen their sword to try to get better. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the courses? Uh, in project management that they'll take? Well, we, we start out with a, uh, uh, the introduction to project management and uh, project planning, which is kind of key uh, in the, in the associates or in the uh, uh, one-year certificate. And those uh, building blocks then apply to the, the next core courses in uh, procurement and execution and control uh, in, uh, for the AAS degree. And then that seamlessly builds into the bachelor degree program where we go into more depth of some of the knowledge, some of the, the subjects that we've talked about, such as uh, execution and control, uh, earn value, uh, we get into risk. Uh, and so we go into some more of the high level, high level skills, human resources, try to how to manage teams more effectively because most of the project management is dealing with people. And these are well paying jobs that they're after, right? I mean, in project management. The average salary on the surveys that Project Management Institute uh, issues to us as members is, uh, is around $90,000. Uh, it varies industry to industry and certainly with experience, so that's probably more like 15, 20 years experienced people. Um, but uh, there's nothing to, nothing to uh, be disappointed with getting into the field. Okay, so if we want to find out more about the program, how do we do that? Well, at the uh, Columbia Basin uh, website, uh, uh, www.columbiabasin.edu slash project management and it'll get to the program description links to courses for the descriptions of that at the bottom of that home page is a, a link to Anthony Lopez who is our outreach uh, retention specialist and he can get you all the information you need in order to get started. Oh, fantastic and you've got a uh, bigger graduating class coming up this year don't you? Right we graduated uh, nine or ten students last uh, last year in our first year of the Bachelor of Applied Management in Project Management and, uh, and then uh, this year we're probably going to have in the 30s number of graduates. So we're pretty excited about the whole program. Great. Thanks for joining us. You bet. Coming up, we'll talk to one of those students who's currently in that program right after this. started to see ways that I can improve our company uh, to better manage projects and to, to, to ask better questions and to get better information. Do you think all project managers should just take this? Um, in a way, anybody who works on any project should really have 
project management experience. It, it would really help if everybody uh, understood the, the concepts and principles. And welcome back. Well, project management, it's a big bachelor's degree program. It's CBC growing every year. And with us now is one of the students from that program, Susan Renberger. Susan, welcome to the show. Thanks, Frank. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you ended up into the project management uh, program. Well, I was in probably 25 years of business to business outside sales and really had always wanted to go back to school and something just kind of opened up and fell in my lap and so I decided I'm going to investigate on what CBC has to offer. I went to an advisor and looked at uh, what are some growing fields, what is some of the experience I have in my past that I can put the two together and uh, found project management, a four-year degree I could get here locally. What was it about project management that attracted, it to, attracted you to it? It is something that can be used in so many fields of business. It uses you know, teamwork and communication and evaluating risks and almost every business works on some type of project. And so I found I could integrate my skills in many businesses if, when I get my degree. What are some of the courses that uh, have uh, made the biggest impact on you maybe? Gosh, that's, there's been a lot of great ones. Um, Probably the couple that I would refine the most is an um, introduction to project management because it gave you this great synopsis of everything that you're going to be studying and what you need to pay attention to for future. Also, um, Primavera, the, it's a software program mm -hmm. that monitors and controls a project. Um, really interesting on how to utilize that. And the next one, integration and communication, it takes all of those processes on how to apply it to a project and how to focus um, your project. Wow. So what kind of career goals do you have after getting out and getting your bachelor's degree? Well, I've been hearing that there is a growing need for people in project controls. So I'm really interested in the metrics of a project and how to manage it. Many projects have failed due to poor planning and poor monitoring. Mm. So I'd like to be part of the process that helps that. So I'm hoping to land in project controls. Fantastic. What would you say to someone who's considering college, not necessarily project management, but they haven't quite made up their mind if they want to go back and get that degree? Oh my goodness, every year that slips by, you just, you could have been there already, you know, and you've got something locally here that has great professors, great adjunct professors, um, something locally you can get uh, as a associates or a bachelors. You shouldn't hesitate, it'd be a shame. It'd be a shame not to, not to do it. Well, Susan, you're a great ambassador for the program, and thank we thank you. you for joining us. Thank you so much, Frank. Well, coming up next, we're going to talk about the inductees into this year's Wall of Fame for the Columbia Basin College Athletic Department. Coming right up. Where can you see stunning views of stars, galaxies, and other wonders of the universe? Visit the Bechtel National Planetarium at Columbia Basin College. Take a guided tour of the night sky under a spectacular dome in the Community Enrichment Foundation Theater where you can learn about phases of the moon, planets, constellations, and other fascinating objects in deep space. Science and educational films for a variety of age groups are also displayed on the planetarium dome. Look up into the night sky. Learn more about our universe. And welcome back. And uh, every January we have the Follow Your Dreams Athletic Banquet, and this being the ninth annual. With us is Athletic Director Scott Rogers, and thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me, Frank. And give us a little bit of history of the Follow Your Dreams Athletic Banquet. Well, it started in uh, 2007 really as a, a way to make up a $20,000 shortfall uh, between what we're allowed to grant for scholarships and where we were actually funded. 
Uh, two years later, we honored uh, Dwight Poole, who coached football for us for five seasons. Uh, he, had, he had recently passed away. We honored him and his family at the event. And uh, one thing leads to another. It turned into a, a Hall of Fame event. And so that's kind of been our signature the last several years. Uh, so we, we have a wall of fame inside the athletic department. Uh, he was our first inductee. We now have 20 inductees, and we're inducting our third team uh, in, on January 29th. And who is part of that team? Well, our first inductee will be Linda Myers. Uh, she's in the Pasco High School Hall of Fame, the NWAC Hall of Fame. She started at CBC in 1972. Uh, and with the implementation of Title IX, she was an assistant basketball coach for our women. And she started the volleyball program and was involved and spearheaded that program for 14 seasons. Wow. Uh, she was also our, our first and only female athletic director at, at CBC. Good choice. Um, our second inductee is Kurt Didier. Uh, played football at CBC in 1975 and 76 and um, uh, holds every single season and career receiving record at the college. Uh, and of course, you know they dropped football in 1982, so that lasts forever. Uh, he transferred to Eastern Washington University and he set a single season record for touchdown receptions in his first year and was an All-American. Uh, that record stood for 30 years and was finally broken in 2010. Um, our final group, our, our third team inductee since we started this project, is a 1972 wrestling team. Um, r arguably the most dominant wrestling performance that the junior college NWAC championships had ever seen. Um, they had nine qualifiers, nine different weight classes, and they came home with seven state champions. And the two that didn't win titles uh, placed and obviously helped the team to a, a team title. Mm -hmm. So uh, just a great class. We're looking forward to inducting them next month. Fantastic. So where does the money go that's generated from the banquet? Well, it still goes towards scholarships. Okay. That's, our, that's our focus primarily. Um, but as we've caught up and made up some ground uh, with how we're funded, we're able to enhance our facilities and, and make those top notch. We just redid our soccer facility. Uh, so now we have the best natural grass surface in the Northwest. Fantastic. Yeah. So uh, what are, uh, we have an auction, right? What yeah. are some of the items we could look for at the auction? Well, we've got a couple of, of nice things. We've got a uh, Alaska fishing trip uh, for two uh, with some airline tickets to go along with that. Uh, we've got a bunch of Seahawks memorabilia signed, Marshawn Lynch, um, uh, Russell Wilson. We've got a, a whole boatload of stuff there. Um, We've got a package called Date Night for a Year. We've got $24, $50 gift certificates to local restaurants that we're going to auction off as a package. Uh, and obviously a bunch of sports memorabilia, wine, and um, it, it runs the gamut. Fantastic. And uh, you're just about sold out already, aren't you? We're, we're at 32 tables right now, and that's about as big as we've ever been. We think we can get four more tables in the room. So. We're, we're pretty much sold out. Okay, so, but if there's any tickets left, how do they go about getting them? Well, they'll call me at 542-4834. Uh, okay, fantastic. Scott, continued success. It's going to be a great night. Great, thanks, Frank. And thank you for joining us on Campus to Community. See you next time.